You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I'm so glad you could be with me. Today, we've got a really great show featuring Nicole Livingston, who is an internationally renowned celebrity spiritual advisor, and she's also a best-selling author with the book, The Art of Manifestation, Aligning Mind, Body, and Spirit. She is really, really a big deal on YouTube. She gives uh, spiritual guidance from Nicole XO. She is um, a master manifester uh, who is expertly skilled at helping people manifest their life mission faster than they could do on their own. And she has managed to accelerate their income to six figures within 12 short months. That's pretty spectacular right there. She is um, uh, really a tremendous person. We're going to learn a lot, so I want you to sit back, relax, get something cool and delicious to drink, and then let's go and visit with Nicole right after these messages. It's here, it's hot, and it's a must read. It's the science behind the Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts, authors, scientists and medical professionals go to law of attraction magazine.net that's law of attraction magazine.net okay i'm back don't forget to go to loa radio network.com where you can get the free hypnosis mp3 of attracting money into your life it's easy all you have to do is listening listen to it and you will discover that your inhibitions or your past beliefs about money no longer serve you you're able to to allow the flow of abundance to flow in it really does work I've used it myself I can vouch for it it's amazing within a couple of days of listening money will start flowing in and why is that? Because you lose, you lose your desire to worry about it. And once you let go of that attachment, oh, miracles happen. So go ahead and get that for free because I don't want to charge you because you deserve to be prosperous and abundant. Also, I'm still looking for sales reps. So if you are interested in making some money having fun and practicing the law of attraction as you do it then contact me at staff at loa radio network.com and let's get going well with that i'm really excited to bring on nicole livingston you're going to find out a whole bunch more but this is an episode all about manifestation so you're gonna love it well welcome nicole livingston to law of attraction talk radio this is so much fun and i'm so grateful that you could be with us today thank you so much for having me this is going to be fun because as i mentioned in my intro you're um internationally renowned celebrity spiritual advisor and um 
you're also a best-selling author about a topic that we love to talk about here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio about manifesting. So it's like, oh yeah, all right, we're going to have some fun today. But I want to go back and let everyone get to know you. So tell us what made you decide to become a spiritual advisor. Did you know that you this was your path at an early age? Well, actually it's it's funny because at an early age I became aware that there was something different uh going on with me and it was at six. But before that I have memory of sitting in the back seat, uh looking up at the window and knowing that my angels and spirit guides were there. So this was before I really could talk. I was communicating and interacting. And as a child, I thought it was what everyone did. It wasn't anything strange until six. And an energy tried to engage me and actually asked to enter my body. And at six, I knew that had never, I'd never experienced that before. None of my angels or spirit guides asked to do that. It scared me, and I realized things were going to be different. And so dialing it forward, I just became open and comfortable with sharing that side of me. And once I did it, you know, I, you, you, you open yourself up to the tribe that's been waiting for you. So you're six years old, and... and uh- an entity wanted to step into you yes and and wow you were scared or terrified we were um i was raised in rochester new york and this was we went to a a big uh, church a catholic church that was a part of the underground railroad and i didn't really realize the significance of that I knew that when we went there, I could get lost in any of the rooms. There were artifacts all over the place. This was in the 70s, and there was just, there was so much wonder and so much beauty, and I was just taken aback. I never wanted to leave. Well, the big kids allowed me to hang with them one day, and they found a Ouija board, and I didn't know what that was, and uh, we didn't talk about that in my, my family. Um, and so I went into the room with them. We put a blanket over the door and because there were no doors around the doorway. We had a flashlight and I was just mum's the word because they're letting me hang with them. They're older than me. They're not seeing me as the crazy kid right now. So I'm being quiet. Oh my goodness. And so the thing started moving the little peg and on the board and I realized out of my right which I've learned to come as my future side, that there was an energy there. And she was dressed in what I know to be slave clothing. And she was a young um, black woman, brown skin, beautiful skin like mine. And so I felt comfortable, but I didn't say anything because no one else was saying anything. So they asked, once she acknowledged that she was there, um, that she spelled out her name, I uh, said her age, and I don't remember specifically what it was. I just remember those two because right after that, she moved to my left side. And they asked if she wanted to enter anyone's body. During that time, Amityville Horror, all the horror movies and all that were coming out. And Ooh. so these older kids, right, <laughs> they knew about all that. We didn't watch that in our home. And I didn't watch you know, trailers will come on. I would already be freaked out because this is stuff that I felt spiritually that wasn't stuff that I was supposed to engage. So anyway, they asked. By that time, she pointed, she turned and looked at me and the thing pointed to me and it freaked me out. Oh, You know, at that point, I said, well, none of my angels or spirit guides are ever asked to enter my body this isn't cool and I ran out of there the daycare camp his name was Tony he was amazing he was the epitome of a hippie and he was very aware 
of my spiritual gifts because come to find out my mother hipped him to it because she was cultivating it in me before I even knew really what to call it. Wow. So when I shared with him, something happened. I'm scared. Please don't tell the rest of the kids. He told me he would never tell. And I just remember, I can still look at it, remember it like it was yesterday, of looking at him and my mother talk when she came to pick me up. And it was just okay. I just knew at that point that I was different and things were going to be different for me. Wow. So let me just ask you, had you allowed them to enter your body, what, what would have happened? What do you think would have been an outcome? Was that a dark energy or was it, um, what, what was it? A great, great question. Um, I believe that it wasn't okay because I knew she wasn't from the time where what I was feeling. I knew she wasn't in my time. Uh-huh. And so I knew she wanted to use me to get a feel for it. And at six, I knew that there was a big difference in the energy that I was feeling from my own and the energy that was what I was used to interacting with. I could go outside and be lost in this little thicket of of, uh, thorn bushes. There was a row that I could crawl right in and I could make my mud pies, have my little tea parties with my dolls and all of that. And I would be in there with my angels and my spirit guides. But I never once felt an energy that was very strongly intent on wanting to enter me. There was always a respect of my personal space. And there was never an interest to enter me. There was always the interaction of beautiful, pure, innocent energy. But with her energy, I didn't feel it as being quote unquote dark. I felt it as in a stronger interest that was an intent that was way more intense than I was used to. So I knew that that was an alarm for me. Wow. So it's amazing at age six, intuitively, you knew to exit. (laughs) That That is really, I mean, for a six year old to have that kind of insight is really spectacular. Thank you. That um, 18 was when I really experienced the first spiritual attack. And so bringing it back to that, I was able to recognize the this energy that was absolutely ungodly. And um, it just blew my mind. And that was really the, the ultimate game changer for me. So, so when, when you were 18, then let's go into that because you can... Um, uh, many people will just accept anything that comes into them, right? Yeah. And and yeah. that's what my feeling is. How do you know that these are in the best interest of everyone? So how how so you reflected back to when you were six years old and you knew that wasn't the right time. But how would people recognize that? Do they just tune in to how they're feeling or? Because I have a feeling it happens much more than than most people admit. Sure. You are so right. And when we're out of alignment, mind, body, spirit, we are engaging energy of all different kinds, all levels. And in order for us to recognize it, a part of it is that intuition but a major part of it. And I really lean more towards saying the part of it is knowing that you're a soul first. You are a soul and you are the soul within your human. And so knowing that your human is your knight, your human is really your best friend. Your human is along for this ride, this experience 
this test and your human will recognize whatever is going on with you, the soul. So with that understanding, our human is fear-based. Our human yeah. gets, right, the first reaction and the first experience, we'll give it to our human and we just step back as the soul. Yeah. And our human is afraid. So when our human goes out and engages with energy, that's our job. Mm -hmm. Our human is naturally tended, a tendency is to go based on what our human knows as memory, which is more faulty than it is um, real because we're going on what has already happened and recalling it. And so being in alignment is really pivotal. There are some key things to do to recognize whether an energy is of God or whether it's not. And so I'm in total agreement with you there. When I was 18, I went to college. Uh -huh. Mother went with me. She is very aware of her spiritual gifts. We've been blessed to know that at least fifth generational now with my children, um, that we are aware of our spiritual gifts as uh, generational seers and visionaries and spiritual guides or spiritual channels. So knowing that I went out in 105 degree temperature, registered for classes, I'm 18, I'm feeling myself, I'm independent. So when she leaves, I'm really independent. <laughs> and, <laughs> She opens the door and says, Nicole, go get your room change. You're not going to want to stay here. And I said, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I'm 18. I'm grown. I'm not changing. I've been out there all day, blah, blah. My mother knew what she was talking about, of course. She stayed an extra week. She protected me from the energy of the roommate. When she left was when all... H-E double hockey sticks broke out. And I say this because my mother was aware of her spiritual gifts. She's aware of mine. However, part of ancient spiritual practice is going through that rite of passage and your initiation. You've got to be able to master your gifts mm -hmm. and be in alignment. And so you've got to break through that fear and you've got to step out on faith. You've got to feed faith and star fear. So in hindsight, I know that's what she did for me. But when she left, I began having out-of-body experiences that I didn't ask for. I started being attacked in my sleep. I started being able to, struggling on being unable to wake up. When I did wake up, I would be in a cold sweat. The roommate, which I don't claim as saying mine, the roommate would be across sitting on her bed and staring at me, laughing. I would wake up finally after a struggle and feel like I had been hit by a train. And I'm on the brink of failing school. Never failed before, never been in this state of existence. And so... I called my mother, told her what was going on, and we started working spiritually. There are certain things that you can do to fight that energy, and you must go hard on it. And so that's what I began to do. But during uh, uh, Thanksgiving break, when I realized that energy followed me, because in my own room, in my home, I started doing the same thing, the same thing type of dreams, waking up, falling to what seemed like an abyss in my sleeping state, waking up feeling like I was punched in the face, all kinds of things, hearing gnashing of teeth, feeling claws. It was absolutely all energy that was not of God. Mm -hmm. It was very clear that there was an energy attacking me for a reason and trying to keep me from being alive. And so she made some phone calls. We've known certain ancient spiritual practice in our um, generation. And this goes back to the saying of, you know, there's wisdom and elders. And this is spans generation, right? Cultures. 
Right. There is wisdom that has to be passed down through generation. And so um, when I went back to school, they told me, Nicole, you've got to ask her if she believes in God. I'm not asking her that. That's what I said. I'm not asking. She's a, she's a brown girl just like me. She's, I'm not asking her that. I mean, of course she does, you know? So again, I go into my independent 18-year-old. I know it all self, regardless of what's going on. In the moment that my roommates came in, or my, not my roommates, my friends came in, and I saw myself from the corner of the room, looked down on myself, struggling to wake up, I could see the roommate over on her bed looking at me laughing and my friends come in and say, where is, they call me, my name is Jennifer Nicole. My human's name is Jennifer. Where is Jennifer? And she pointed to me and they said, oh, how long has she been asleep? Well, just tell her that we came by. Now, when they're saying that, I am screaming for them to please wake me up. Don't leave me in here. Don't leave. I start crying now just to think about how that separation of me, the soul, had left my body and was looking down at my human. And so when I finally woke up, she was staring at me laughing. And I said, did you see me struggling to wake up? And she said, yeah. And I said, why didn't you wake me up? And she said, because it's funny. And I said, do you believe in God? And she laughed and said, no. And I ran out of that room and I ran to the registrar's office and I explained to them, you've got to move me. You've got to get me out of there. They never asked one question. They just said, the only room we have available is across the hall. Now the room, the dorm was so small, you could touch both sides of the wall. And I said, I'll take it. Everything stopped from that point on. Once I got into the room across the hall, it was like night and day. Hmm. You got away from that energy. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That doesn't sound like fun. But having experienced that, it was a teacher for you on how to gear yourself to the proper energy. Yes, it was. Absolutely. That's important for everyone. Is there a technique that we should be doing before we start even meditating to make sure that we're all safe and secure? Yes, and thank you for asking me. Um, I am a strong believer that spiritual safety is first. So in all of our programs, our private coaching or group coaching, spiritual safety is number one. And we go through understanding the difference between um, positive energy, godly energy, and the opposite. So the first thing you want to do is Make sure that you're paying attention to your own energy. Know your energy first. That's number one. And so when you do find that your energy is it being engaged by a different energy, you'll be able to tell the difference. But just like you said, if we're ignoring that side of ourselves, then how can we know the difference once it happens? So first point is to always know your own energy. Some good ways to know your own energy is to really plain and simply be alone. Mm. Just give yourself that space. Mm. When we're outside in nature, we're interacting with our ancestors. Every single one of us. They talk to us through the wind. When you feel that tickle on your cheek, and you receive a message just like that. It wasn't from you. It was from our ancestors. So grounding through the soles of our feet, letting the soles of our feet connect with Mother Earth Mm. brings us into a balance like none other. 
And so that's really key. If we don't do anything other than that, if anyone walks away with anything, let them know that. We call the bottom of our feet the soles of our feet for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> there's a portal <laughs> for the energy of the earth. I, I love that. I love that. So would you, I mean, just for curiosity's sake here, there are then some people who are professing to be channels, but they may not be actually bringing out good information. Is that true? Is that because I'm finding in my line of work, <laughs> there are so many channels. And it's like, how do you know? How do you know? I mean, is it because you're resonating with the message or you're feeling good with the message or give us your professional advice on how to recognize. I really appreciate you asking that and opening the floor for discussion because there are plain and simple, a lot of phonies and there are people out here that are doing an injustice and a disservice to many and I don't believe that all of them quite understand that the work that they're doing is creating a cycle of hardship for some of their clients. Mm -hmm. I want to just say one thing first, that some people ask me, Nicole, as spiritual practitioners, Nicole, how can I get right with spirit? How can I get right with God? And then I have to ask, why are you even asking that question? Mm. And it's because they will have wronged someone in their congregation, in their uh, group, a client. And I can't touch that because of that energy. They got to go back and they've got to deal with that directly to the person, the soul that they have wronged and then ask for forgiveness. And if they're unable to do that, They've got to do it spiritually. But the one way that you want to protect yourself from that is to honor your intuition. Mm -hmm. When you know yourself, you will know how your intuition is. You will know it's called your spiritual guidance. Spiritual guidance is the way the universe, spirit, our creator reaches out to us. And divine source will reach out to us the way that we can receive it. It will be different for all of us, but it will be the same spiritual guidance. Oh, that's, so, that's so important. So when you have readings with your clients, you are um, geared up because you know your, your intuition, you know how you feel, you know that what is there is for the better, the best for you and your client. So you give them advice on w the forecast or what is the probability of where they're leading or where they're going or what is it exactly that you do for your client and the reading? Sure. I allow that space for my spirit guides, our angels, their spirit guides, our ancestors, which is coming from God, divine source. It all leads up to our higher power. That's my belief. That's who I worship. Uh -huh. And so I believe that God sends messengers, angels, um, manifestations to us and i'm connected through that and so when a message comes through it may be through my spiritual sight i may see it i have been blessed to um be able to tell people when they're pregnant but also um have run my mouth too quick and they may have just miscarried um and so or they may have not told anybody yet and they're wondering how i know and, uh, you know, and so knowing that is through your spiritual sight, it's through your intuition, 
but that's also understanding your intuition is, con is connected to your intellect. So again, it goes back to knowing that you are the soul within your human and your human has to be in alignment, mind, body, spirit. Otherwise, you are letting your human act on human fear, human conditioning, which is ego. And I've had clients be, you know, totally bruised by going to channels that are testing the waters and um, saying their channels when they're not or they're not practicing spiritual safety and just be, you know, hurt and put into kind of a traumatic tailspin. So, so yeah, it's really important to know in our spiritual guidance and our spiritually guided readings, we pray, we align, we take a deep breath in and we raise our vibration because I won't accept everyone as a client. Just because I'm asked to go to spirit on their behalf, that doesn't mean that I'll be even allowed to do that. So I have to ask for permission. Our spiritual gifts are gifted to us. Mm -hmm. And I really recommend, I invite everybody to treat them as such. So you would... Um if you see their future, mm -hmm. you would be able to, like, as a coach, you would be able to guide them with the reading onto what opportunities to take, which are better for them, right? Yes, and that is, oh, Jules, it feels so good to be able to do that. It is, oh, it's such my blessing to do that. It, when I'm able to receive a vision or hear a message and be able to tell them, you know, what it is and then open the floor for that discussion, it's because it's something that's on their soul. So when they pour that out as a channel, I receive it. And when I'm open. So if I fall out of alignment, which happens because we're all part human, right. if I fall out of alignment, I've got to pause get right on back in and you know Jennifer might have stepped in being nosy and because it's getting good and this is a beautiful session and Jennifer steps in and is like oh my gosh and really and we're having a more of a, a human interaction and I've got to say wait a minute I need to plug back in let me get back into alignment Jennifer needs to go back to sleep and Nicole needs to take over and serve as that passage for that safe beautiful energy to flow so that spiritual guidance will speak directly to my client uh, for example i just had a reading um two days ago that put him into tears i saw him while he was sharing which is not always forthcoming that's important to know it's a, it's a vulnerable experience and i get it and so i tried my very best to put my clients at ease um, because once you are receiving spiritual guidance, it's out of your hand. And in order for you to receive it, you have to have given that and total faith. So in that discussion, that may come, but it may not start out that way. And that's what happened with him. He began to feel more comfortable. And about third was an hour session, hour and a half. So in about 30, 45 minutes in, he shared a story with me and I told him, excuse me, I'm seeing a vision. And I told him what I saw and it was like the Titanic and he was rowing away from it in white and it was the sunset and there was a handkerchief waving in the air and they were all saying bye, but they were partying. They didn't want to leave the boat. He was gone, done with that lifestyle. So there's a little bit more to it. I interpreted that message, but I asked him, what's the deal with that? And he said, Nicole, I don't know what to say to you. I just told somebody that exact message. He used that as um, a metaphor, if you will, and describing how he felt um, to a friend of his about his life and or an analogy and how he felt that they were all on the Titanic and that he needed to roll himself away and he wasn't going to take anybody with him. He knew he had to do it by himself. Wow. And I was able to tell him 
you know, that you'll be just fine. That that is what you have to do. And so you've got that confirmation. Wow. So, so people will actually um, have their own, they're, they're, with your reading, they're actually connecting to you, to spirit, and having their own visions as well? Yes. That's well, unique. Now, that's unique. That's yeah. the first time I've heard of that because you're sharing the gift. Yes. 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 Oh, my gosh. That's Dude, powerful. It is. It feels so powerful. Like right now, honey, I can see our angels around me and I can feel their presence. One thing that people, I really want people to understand is the tingling, is the tightening of your skin. You'll know that that spiritual energy around you, it is not yours. Your energy is giving a metaphysical reaction to your human when energy is interacting with you or engaging in some way, shape, or fashion. So the energy I just felt now is gone. It will feel the prickling, the tingling, the burning sensation, the radiating of energy, the waves. And you might go like this, nothing's there. You might look behind you, you feel like something's there. You don't see anything with your human sight. Acknowledge that moment and try to stop yourself from fearing it. Remember, we're dual. Yeah. So your human will automatically say it's logically impossible. That's when you really want to take that and run with it wow that is so cool so it people who are coming to you are experiencing a double experience not just you telling them they're able to feel it and that's pretty special that's it is. that's out of the norm but that is wow that is so cool that's so cool so you have uh something called liquid gold i've just got to touch on it. you got to explain what is liquid gold <laughs> liquid gold is a part of the system that we use in our seven month life mission master class academy and um i won't give it all away because we were, we're just about to tap into that in this year's academy and i want to you know I want it to be the aha moment for our <laughs> students. I can understand that. I can understand that. But it is something that I was able to um, really create and cultivate with Divine Source's help. Um, it helps us realign with our niche, which is aligned with our life mission, our soul purpose. Mm -hmm. And it really is embedded in looking at the word value in a different way we can see you know value in what we do and who we are but when you're really talking about your soul purpose and what fulfills you we tend to escape that yeah. because we feel right yeah, we do. you know and you go through that inner outer struggle should i be getting paid for this <laughs> You know, and it's just like, well, then people tell you, you shouldn't get paid to do stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> it's, oh, called, really? it's called Fair Energy Exchange. There you go. I love that. Fair Energy Exchange. Of course. Uh, of course. That's, that's how life is. Fair that's Energy right. Exchange. So, it's yes. an offering, right? Right. So, so the value system is pretty much embedded in liquid gold, but it, the, the name came about because I first approached it with our private coaching sessions and one after the other started saying, Nicole, this is like liquid gold. You got to <laughs> share this. And I'm just like, what? So spiritual guidance speaks to you like that. And it was confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. So they are really who put it into being. How wonderful. That is so great. Now, I, I want to um, uh, touch on your book, which is um, really terrific. But first, you know, I want to make sure that people make it, if they're on the computer or 
just by virtue of their cell phone, they could go to NicoleExo.com and you can find everything that we're talking about here. She really is um, uh, all about mastering the art of manifestation. And to me, that is, um, well, it's what we're about. But you have a book on there. It's beautiful, by the way. Um, and it's called uh, The Art of Manifestation, Aligning Mind, Body, and Spirit. Wow, that is a beautiful, beautiful cover. Thank you so much. Wow, I, I'm going to have a picture of that for the show. But tell me, that's the bestseller? Um, actually, the seven ways to master any spiritual awakening through spiritual guidance is the bestseller. Okay. And the ebook is really what um, is an offering for people that are wondering, does manifestation really work? You know, and that, well, this is all mumbo jumbo. And for people that are using, trying to use the law of attraction and vision boards and affirmations and still unable to tie it together and make it work, the bestseller is a manifestation of using the steps from the book, the ebook, the art of manifestation. And your ebook is free. Yes, it is. So if they go to your site, they can get this free ebook, which, um, gosh, it looks just fantastic. The art of manifestation. I just love that. So, and we can get your other book on here uh, on your site as well. Yes, you can. Good. Okay, so give us some information about manifesting. Is it because of our limiting beliefs or, or what, what's going on? How come we can't realize our full potential with manifesting? What stops us? That's an excellent question. So powerful. I believe what really stops us is falling out of alignment. We forget that we are created as a dual being. And we've got to understand that we are the soul within our human. And once we are aware that it's not separating, when we experience a spiritual awakening, which is the moment we do realize we're a soul within our human on many different levels, because we experience multiple awakenings in our lifetime, it is a matter of bringing our human along and not abandoning our human. And so we realize, oh my gosh, there's this other way of being, this vibrancy, and I don't need to live like that anymore. Yeah. But then there becomes, uh, well, what was I doing all along? And our human is a, very embedded in our intellect. So with that is a very thin line of, beating ourselves up while still trying to obtain our higher self when in actuality manifestation of that inner happiness and that outer success is really coming back into appreciation for self. You know, we've got to understand that we are living this experience that is a test. And when we go through all of these tests, and we have these failures we use those as stepping stones so now we have to really be in alignment with our human to say human it's okay that you went through that I'm so grateful for you you know our human gets battered and bruised we got to bring our human back into alignment by giving our human certain things um, certain uh, desires and pleasures that are healthy so there's a whole realignment of self. Um, and I really feel like that's a big missing key in manifestation. The other thing is when we hear raising our vibration, we, most of us understand we're trying to keep our energy high and excited and all optimistic. 
but the law of attraction is very embedded in that energy what we attract right so the key part there that i feel is missing we found out in our coaching is you can also attract energy that you're around you aren't necessarily attracting energy from you it's not always necessarily you attracting this energy to you for example i've had a couple of clients that were abused as children and they had coaches that and one of them is a certified law of attraction coach they had coaches tell them that somehow they attracted that to them and i don't believe that i don't agree with that at all what i have learned out of experience and research and i'm a researcher i'm big on that but what i found was the energy you're vibrating and radiating on is not just yours because energy co-mingles right and when we're vibrating on this frequency we're not doing that by ourselves. We're not there. We're never alone. Energy is energy. And energy is here and there and where and everywhere. It's timeless. So if a parent, for example, is engaging low energy because of the company they keep, that energy is around their children. Oh. The child didn't bring that abuse to them. So the law of attraction is very real. The universe is, a, you are, is allowing you to have that opposite pull. But that's why we've got to keep it raised. We've got to keep our energy raised up, our, our vibration positive and elevated the best we can. But it goes back to being human. We've got to be in alignment, mind, body, spirit, and take our human along for the ride and not beat our human up. So with a, a child, though, it would be important for an adult to see that they're down and to actually help them to get up so that they can keep from away or, or stay away from that environment that could be dangerous for them, right? Yes, yes. And so for them to know that, hey, if you are engaging with, you know, energy that is combative, toxic, you are creating and cultivating toxic energy to continue to thrive. Mm. And all ungodly energy loves that environment. Mm -hmm. And our babies are the most precious, they're the most pure. Mm -hmm. I just had a consultation with a longtime coaching client today that um, her two-year-old is seeing. Um, we, we're not sure yet if it is her deceased 17-year-old son who just passed away or if it is ungodly energy because she's acknowledging it as the monster's gone. Once she indicates that the energy is there and her parents look there, the energy goes and she says the monster's gone. So we're not quite sure yet, wow. but energy that is ungodly will attack the most pure, the most precious. And just as I was attacked at 18, I was on my track to live in my mission. Um, when I was five, um, there was a man that followed me into the house. I, my brother was watching me. I went into the house. I was supposed to stay out with my brother. I didn't. I was four or five, went into the house, the door closed behind me. And before I could turn around, I felt myself being pushed down and I was unable to get up. But what I felt and what I saw was when I was down like this, I could see my angels still looking at me. And as soon as I was down, 
I was able to feel free, like a weight had been lifted. And as soon as I looked back, I could see him, his body, this man's body, fly completely back. And he looked at me like he saw a ghost and ran right back out of the house. Wow. And so that energy will attack the most pure. So are we, instead of recognizing the dark energy or the moment that we recognize the the energy that doesn't feel good to us, we then focus on angels or our guides or something that we can feel connected to. We feel yes. love because we're, we need to gravitate towards that love feeling. Yes. Yes. And when we are not teaching our children uh, that what they are seeing, we believe, when we're teaching them to lie about the spiritual experiences they're having, we are doing them the biggest disservice. We are disconnecting them from their innocence and from their connection with source. Yeah. They come out, you know, they come, they're, they're conceived um, as the most pure in regardless of the circumstances. And they are the most innocent. When you look at a baby, they are so connected to the spirit realm, they can't help but to smile and giggle and yes. laugh while they're in the sleeping state, right? So until they're taught, otherwise, you know, we rob them of that because of our own human condition fear of this is taboo, this is witchery, this is um, evil and all of that, when there is a strong difference between ungodly and godly. But when someone is, you know, a natural indigo child, child of the light, um, or not, teaching a child that they aren't connected to a higher power actually is really creating an adult that comes to me for coaching that is all confused about the spiritual experiences they're having. Is it real? Is it, is it godly? Is it evil? Should this be happening? So you're really, the people that come to you for coaching, they're the ones who are, well, looking to empower their lives and to manifest, but to really gain in the spiritual realm. They're looking for that, mystical experience that they can have along with you they are they are looking for confirmation they are looking for the answers that either they are unable to receive or afraid to receive and they are also starting their spiritual based practice and unable to move past um the image of what you hear now, the, um, the hype of, you know, I can teach you how to be a badass coach and all this other terminology that you hear now. They want to know how to really get a profound, deepened connection. Yeah. And they want to really move past that stereotypical image of I'm a jet setter coach and they want to get results for their clients. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, and that's that's where we need to be getting results for the clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not so much about the coach; it's about helping the clients, and that's good. Mm -hmm. So, so you, even though you haven't said it, I am feeling that you are a person who steps outside of yourself to deliver the information. In other words, you don't get stuck within yourself. You're able to step out of it and be of service. And that's really your intention. You bring tears to my eyes. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's all about. And that's how mystical experiences happen, is when you step outside of yourself to serve. It's like the universe just brings it all to you yeah. is that am i correct in oh honey <laughs> <laughs> i guess i must be <laughs> yeah. okay oh my goodness it is 
yo to be here after doctors told me I wouldn't be to have two beautiful spiritual warriors that drive me crazy in the summertime <laughs> after they told me they would never be born and to be able to teach others about their connection with our higher call, our higher power, divine source, and to help them know and show their spiritual gifts is more than I could have ever thought possible when I was ignoring my own. So now that yes, I'm living outside of myself openly and not hiding to do it all the rest of my life that I was doing because you can't ignore your calling. So you're going to do it, either it, try to do it in hiding and secret or you're just going to let your whole spiritual flag fly. Yes. You know what I discovered is that people, when, especially with my hypnosis clients, my clients would say, I, I want the money. I just can't get it. I'm miserable. It doesn't work for me. And it's like, well, you, you're stuck, but you're stuck within yourself. It's like, you know, remove that barrier from you. Stop getting so stuck on you have to and the attachment. And, I, you know, I just got to say, you know, I love money but it's not the biggest thing or the most important thing in my life. I, I don't have a desire to be a huge billionaire uh, or a millionaire. I just don't have that desire. And I'm just not attached to it. Because I'm not attached to it, money flows in. And people have this huge lack, desire, uh, they can't get it. And that's what's so heartbreaking to me. Is that yeah. they're stuck. They're and stuck. I'm sure that's where you can really identify them probably within the first five minutes that they're stuck within themselves. I had a client not too long ago who I was very resistant and I was questioning, you know, why am I doing a reading? And I'm having that dialogue with who my top spirit guide is Queen Mother. She's always right there. Thank you so much, Queen Mother. And she is a powerful energy. So I'm asking her, well, why am I doing a reading? And she was very combative. And so uh, my client. And so I asked her, you know, so why are you going into uh, your mission? And she said, well, I don't know. You tell me. That's why we have a reading. That's why I, I asked you to give me a reading. And so I said, okay. So I saw Queen Mother go like this. And so I just let her know exactly what you just said. You have to get out of your own way. <laughs> and this attachment to, you know, being broke, you know, it's not going to happen until you tell your aunt and your mother to get out of your face. And you have to go in and you have to be the matriarch in your own right. And because I could see them towering over her. And she just got zip quiet and she just said Nicole I knew you were the real deal and uh, yeah that's great you know sometimes we just have to we can't see it for ourselves we have to have a coach deliver that message to us I think it's even more important to have a spiritual coach that can deliver that message because as I can see with you right now you are connected to the energy. You're, you're, you are the real deal. You are connected. But what I love so much about you is that you are connecting your client to their spiritual realm. That is, um, boy, that's a godsend. Thank you so much, Jules. It, you know, I can tell you I wasn't ready always to do it and i just you know had my conversations with source are you sure they're gonna think i'm even more crazier than they already do you know what about my kids i've got to think about them and their reputation and all of that but 
Yeah, it's so important for everybody to know they have a personal, profound connection with our Creator. They are all spiritually gifted. We are all spiritually gifted. We all have a soul calling, and we deserve to live this lifetime and max it out helping everybody. If we can't be a part of that collective experience, then what are we doing? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, this has been fun, absolutely fun, and we're all out of time, but I want to send everybody to www.necolenicolexo.com. The XO, is that a kiss? It is. Kiss and hugs. Kiss and hugs. That's so cool. I love that. I like that a lot. It's so appropriate. So you're feeling the love as you enter the site. I like that. So go there, check out all of her programs, get the free ebook, purchase her other book, her best selling book. And uh, if anything, I think you should book. I'm telling this to all my listening audience. You really need to book a session with her. The reason is for your own sake, and your own connectability to source. That's the most important thing. I mean, you can't go wrong with that right now. Right? That's right. That's right. We are moving to that experience. And honey, we need it. In the world we live in, we need it. Yeah. We, we just had two celebrities commit suicide. And that lack of inner happiness does not exist when you are aware of how to tap into, how to acknowledge, and how to apply and teach spiritual guidance. Right, right. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing these it really terrific information. I just love it. Thanks so much, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com and have a great week.